Welcome back to my workshop. Just making more sawdust again. Actually, this hunk of wood that I'm carving into shape is going to be the neck of a mountain banjo. Just like this one hanging here. Now, as you can see, this looks quite different from those played by most bluegrass and country musicians. The most obvious difference is the large wood rim and the small drum head. Like the dulcimer, the banjo evolved from other instruments from other countries, but didn't come through Europe like most of our stringed instruments, but from Africa. The slave trade brought many diverse tribal people together into forced labor throughout the Americas. Many of these people, like the European immigrants that I talked about earlier, brought the memory of their musical heritage with them. When given the chance, they fashioned musical instruments out of anything they had available. Now, scholars have found that many African instruments and early American slave instruments have names related to the modern word banjo, such as banjar, banjil, banza, bango, banji, and bansha. Now, the first mention of these instruments in the Western Hemisphere is from Martinique in a document dated 1678. It mentions slave gatherings where a stringed instrument called the banza is used. Further mentions are fairly frequent and well documented. The best known, probably that of Thomas Jefferson in 1781, when he wrote, the instrument proper to the slaves is the banjar, which they brought hither from Africa. Early banjos, as well as the current tenor banjo, have four strings. The short fifth string is always assumed to have been added around the time of the Civil War. However, a recent discovery of a painting entitled The Old Plantation, painted around 1777, shows a black gourd banjo player with the banjo having a fifth string peg halfway up the neck. But it wasn't until after the Civil War that the banjo gained popularity as a parlor instrument. It was considered, as the Boston Daily Evening Voice of 1866 said, as an instrument in the depth of popular degradation, an instrument fit only for the jig-dancing lower classes of the community. Well, you've got to remember that nearly everything was at one time banned in Boston. Now, the banjo did become quite popular and was not only used in the parlor, but in many 1920s jazz bands. The folk banjo, or mountain banjo like this one, which started with the slaves in the south, worked its way up through the Appalachian Mountain communities north, and also to the Midwest farm communities of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Like the early slave banjos, the mountain banjos were also built using whatever material was available, such as cigar boxes, coffee tins, and green wood cut from local trees. Some builders tried to duplicate the banjo drumhead by stretching tan skins over bent wood rims, stovepipes, or large cans. There are examples of banjos made with goat skin, squirrel skin, and rabbit. Now, playing styles vary from person to person. The most common tunings were of open chords that made strumming easy and always sounded good no matter how well a person played. More accomplished players, um, a lot more accomplished than me, can finger pick tunes. And others use what's called a claw hammer technique, where tunes and chords are clawed with the backs of the fingernails while the thumb hits the high fifth string. <laughs> I 
anyway. With all that said, you can understand that there are as many different styles and ways of playing the banjo as there are players. The mountain banjos I build are based on those I've seen in several of the musical history books in my personal library. But instead of using squirrel skins or rabbit skins or gopher, which Santa Cruz has quite an abundance of, I've found that small hand drums that I've ordered over the internet make very good resonators inside these wood rims. And to make these wood rims, I cut them roughly to size, then turn them on my lathe to make them perfectly round. Sometimes I'll carve figures or inlay decorative inlays into the front. On the head, I'll often inlay my traditional trademark man in the moon. Here I used recycled farm abalone. It's the remnants of a meal from a local restaurant. Sometimes I'll use recycled and fossil ivory or wood. And now, to hear how these mountain banjos sound when played by an excellent musician, once again, here's Ren Eric. Clumsy looking purple, drinking in the sunlight. The mama's looking yellow, remembering the moonlight. Everybody's eating all in the morning light. The bees are busy buzzing on each flower inside. The peaches are all fuzzy with dew from last night's moon. But everybody's eating all in the morning light. The birds are in the backyard eating up the seeds. The gophers in the garden pulling out some weeds. And everybody's eating all in the morning light. The apples looking green, green, soaking up some sunlight. Some flowers looking so white, a token of the moonlight. Everybody's eating all in the morning light. The ants are busy marching, the butterflies are drunk. Kites, the sow bugs are all munching everything inside. And everybody's eating 